ladies. Hey. Oh, happy Monday. Happy International Women's Day. I'm glad that we're all here together as the women of Vistrico Productions to talk about uh, women in the industry that have blazed trails, women we admire, and just celebrate uh, women in production. Brie, I know, I know women in post-production in particular, there's a really interesting history there. Can you tell us some about that? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You think about it as a male-dominated field, but actually... When movies were first starting, the men would do the glamorous part. They'd shoot it and they'd be on set all day. And then they'd just send it to the women to do the boring job of literally cutting it. That's what editing was. It was cutting and slicing together. And they likened it to sewing. And so it was just this menial, tedious task that the men couldn't be bothered doing. So most of the post-production houses in the 20s and 30s were owned by women. And there was just this era of women in charge of the editing process. And then it was Margaret Booth who kind of invented the close-up and was like, wow, if we cut really close into this next shot, the emotion is so much more intense. And from there it became more of an art and the term film editor was invented. You know, it women have been marginalized throughout history, but there's always been women editors making really important strides. Um, even the famous cut in Lawrence of Arabia, uh, where the you go from the match to the desert, that famous match cut. Andy Coates was working with the, closely with the director and just came up with that. And um, there's there's women throughout history with, with moments like that. And so it's really cool to, to sit back and appreciate that legacy. That's so crazy that it was just considered like more of like a technical task and less of, of an art form at some point. I like, can't even conceive of that. I know it's such a crucial part of the process now. I can't, it's so, yeah, so weird to think it was just sewing. Some directors would try to start and stop really succinctly so they could control the edit and say, you know, we're not giving you a second more footage. This is exactly the footage that you should use. But some directors would just shoot for date anything they could find. The Ten Commandments was a movie where the director shot days and days and days worth of footage. And it fell to this one woman to just piece together a story from that. And it's considered one of the, the most arduous editing jobs of all time. <laughs> the process of editing, which can be arguably quite a tedious process. Like it's something that's now being like highlighted and people are actually being seen for like all the work that goes into it. Uh, and I actually feel very similarly about like film scores. And Nora, I know that like, that's something that's really important to you. Like film scores or this thing that's a lot of people like don't talk about or highlight, but they're really, so precious to you. And I know that there are a lot of female film composers that don't often get, you know, highlighted um, adequately. And I would love to know if, you know, what female film composers you are inspired by. Absolutely. I'm obsessed with film scores, as you guys know. <laughs> There's this organization, the Center for the Study of Women in Television and Film, and they did a study in 2019, and they found that 94% of box office films the previous year were composed by men. Um, so there are very few women working in, in the film scoring industry, which is, which is crazy to me because there, there are a lot of great talents. There just haven't been opportunities for them. The Oscars in particular, they started giving out awards for scoring in like the early thirties. Um, and since then only seven women, seven have been nominated for any sort of film scoring work. Um, and of those, only four women have ever won. It was 50 years until the first female won an award for best score, and she won it with her husband. It was this woman named Marilyn Bergman, and she and her husband won for the movie Yentl. And it was like 1983. So that just shows you also how long it took for a woman to, to even be acknowledged. And it was her and her husband, Rachel Portman. She was nominated for the movie Emma. She was the first woman to win like a solo film composing award. And it's beautiful. And her scores, I would say, are like essential listening for anybody, male, female. Um, she went on to score the film uh, Shock a Lot and Cider House Rules. And those movies also, they got nominations as well. Um, and she's still like kicking ass to this day. The year after that, the next woman won uh, for The Full Monty. So still, we're still in like musical comedy category and she won best score for that. Her name's Anne Dudley. And then last February, this woman from Iceland who lives in Berlin, her name's Hildur, and I'm gonna totally mess this up because it's an Icelandic name, Hildur Gunadotter. Gunadotter? 
we're going with that. Hildur, um, she won for Joker. So oh. she was the first dramatic film score to ever win by a female and the first person who's a woman to win in this new category that was the now best original score. She was the first woman to win in that. And she was the first woman to win a Golden Globe uh, solo for her film score. And the Joker score, please listen to it if you haven't discovered it yet. It's beautiful. She spent a lot of time and care thinking about the Joker in particular and how, you know, it's a movie about mental health and how he's, she said he's going through this like excruciating journey and she was trying to get into his head. So it's very dark. It's very powerful. And I think it's just a true work of art. So um, that's worth a listen, but it's just so fascinating to me that she's the fourth of all time and the first like dramatic score. And there are so many greats, like the, the score for The Shining was composed by two amazing women. And there's very little music in that film, but I think that's like on the level of Jaws, how iconic it is. Uh, and two women composed the music for that. There's a lot of great female film composers. I even have a Spotify playlist that I made um, that <laughs> hopefully we can share uh, around that's of like kind of some of my favorite female film scoring moments. I think these women, prove that you know we have we have the talent we have the creativity we have the drive we have the will we have the abilities um but we just need that opportunity yeah it's really just about being able to be put in the spotlight and prove it and get that chance in the first place um and i think things have definitely been escalating the last few years um jesse what what it came out this last year that you that you particularly enjoyed for me there were really two films that i felt you know, did this really amazing thing of almost reinventing the wheel, um, in my opinion. Um, one is this horror thriller that came out last June by Nisa Hardiman, it's called Sea Fever. Um, and it's this really beautiful movie that sort of tracks a young marine biologist who um, basically boards a fishing boat um, in an efforts to study uh, marine organisms. Meanwhile, this mysterious illness kind of takes over the other crew members on the boat. And she is tasked with basically finding out what it is and saving the people who are, who are dying on this ship. Um, and something that I find so beautiful about this film is, is a lot of times in the horror and thriller genres, we see women, either they are the ones who are going crazy and sort of lose their minds, if you will, or they are the sort of demonic presence, right? Whether or not they're like the girl with the long hair, like emerging from the TV or that, you know, in the long nightgown. And I think what's so fascinating about Sea Fever is the idea that, you know, we have this female protagonist uh, who not only is not, you know, the, a negative presence, right, throughout the film, but is in fact solely responsible for saving this crew of men. Um, and to me, that's something that I just found really, really special um, just about uh, you know, the story. Um, and the other movie that I, I, I watched just recently and Brie, you now share my, my fandom uh, for this film, but it's Kirsten Johnson's documentary, Dick Johnson is Dead. Um, it came out last year um, and it's just such a wonderful examination of this woman's father, whom she loved so dearly, uh, and just their relationship. And it's, it's a really up close encounter with death and memory and familial ties. Um, and it's a documentary, but it's surreal in a lot of ways. And I think at this point, you know, in, now we're in 2021, but in 2020, to think about reinventing a genre, to me, that's such a challenge. Um, but she did it and she did it so beautifully. Um, and it's just wonderful to see movies like this come out that are not only stunning to, to watch like as a viewer, but are just really challenging the norms of genre and of stereotypical female roles in films. Um, I just find that to be so profound. I felt that that movie was special, especially because it really pointed out that as we allow new voices and as we allow more people to express themselves without limitations, there's gonna just be new stories. Like we have, as women, there's just a unique perspective um, as there is with any marginalized or minority group. 
and it's exciting to see them come to light with that that full budget and that full crew that's behind them and supporting them and, and helping them really create their vision. I need to watch those movies, stat. Oh, yeah. So good. Just like, don't go on camera immediately the next day is all I'm gonna <laughs> say about that. <laughs> I, I just, I find it so amazing that like, even now, I mean, I think that's really the beauty of film rays. Like it can, it can make you feel so deeply and it's a lasting thing, like, you're a good example of it, Brie, right? Like to watch this movie and to be so moved by it. Um, I guess we can only hope that like art we make has that effect on people, you know? You know, it feels kind of silly, especially it's 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 easy to feel comfortable in this company and, and in our work day to day, but it's nice to just take a moment and appreciate you guys and appreciate the people, our colleagues in the industry and, um, just want to thank you guys for being there to, to listen to and talk to whenever we need it. And uh, yeah, happy, uh, happy International Women's Day. <laughs> happy International Women's Day. <laughs>